Hi everybody, welcome back to the channel. Today we have our 2017 Palomino 12FD setup and it's ready for a power upgrade. We're going with a rather inexpensive lithium setup that will drop in with no major modifications needed to the trailer. Follow along with us as we swap out the old deep cycle battery for this new lithium replacement. We'll also upgrade the power converter that is needed to charge the new lithium battery. All items can be purchased from Amazon. I will share the link below in case you would like to do this upgrade yourself. All items cost us about $500 at the time of purchase. For the battery, we have the EcoWorthy 100 amp hour lithium unit. This is a very basic battery, but it's perfect for our needs. The best thing about it is it will still fit into the standard Group 24 battery box we have. Onto the converter, we have the WF Co. WF8725AD. The AD stands for Auto Detect. Now this is important because this will detect the lithium battery and increase the voltage to properly charge the lithium battery. Okay, let's go over the tools needed to complete this job. We're going to be using an electric screwdriver. Regular screwdriver is fine as long as you have a square bit for it. We're also going to need a Phillips screwdriver, a roll of tape and a sharpie to mark our wires, a set of closed end wire connectors, a pair of wire strippers, a pair of wire cutters, and also a wrench to remove the battery terminals. Step one, if connected, please remove the shore power lead from your trailer. Next, we'll come to the battery and disconnect both the ground and then the positive leads. After the wires are disconnected to the battery, move on into the trailer and locate your power converter. This area here will drop down and you'll access the two screws to remove the faceplate. With the old faceplate in hand, take note most of the time, the factory will write the breaker orientation for your trailer here. You want to put that back together pretty much the same way as it came off. Next, we're going to remove this clamp and take out the breakers. With the breakers, you just want to rock them back and forth and they'll pull right out. With one of the breakers pulled out, we are going to mark both of these wires and indicate which side they'll go to so we can put it back. For reference, I've marked a series of dots here, two dots here, two dots here, one dot here, one dot here. It's a good idea to take a picture of it just in case something happens. We're going to do the same thing to this side with a different set of dots, say three and four. Now that we have marked all of our load wires in correspondence with the breakers they belong to, we're going to use our square drill bit and remove the wires from the breakers themselves. Next, we're going to go ahead and remove all the neutral wires off the neutral bar as followed with the ground. We might need to take this inner face plate off as well. There's just going to be another set of Phillips screws to take that off, one in each corner. The inner face plate was only removed to show you that these two, this load wire and this neutral wire, 
are connected to the converter. These two will not be pulled through. You want to leave those intact and leave them off to the side. Take note of the orientation of your fuses and make sure they are the correct and according to the faceplate. You're going to want to put those back in the same way as well on the new converter. Now we are going to remove the four screws that hold the converter in place. We're going to be using our square drill bit again. As we're about to pull out the converter, we want to make sure we separate these. There's going to usually be two set of Romex. We want to separate them so they can exit the rear of the converter as we pull out. We're just going to lightly pull out here. They will have these clamps. We're going to have to tackle those right now. Now that we've popped the Romex clips out of the back of the converter, we're going to focus on the color-coded 12-volt side. Very good idea now to go ahead and mark all the small wires coming off of these so you know which circuit they belong to. Now that we have all of our wires color code marked, we can go ahead and use our cutters and cut the wires. The last two wires are going to be the common ground and the inlet power to the trailer. Those will probably have wire nuts on them. Just go ahead and undo the wire nut. You may want electrical tape in this case to re -put, seal this back on. With the new converter in hand, we're going to have to knock out the two areas here for the Romex to clip back in. With everything knocked out, we're going to go ahead and reinstall our 12 volt side, same way as we took it off. We're going to be using our large cap end wire connectors. These are CE5 and CE8 size. Once the 12 volt side's all buttoned up, we're going to push the Romex back through and the chassis ground and connect the breakers. Now that we have all the 110 side fed through the converter, you can probably go ahead and put the screws in to keep it in place, and we'll go ahead and do the breakers themselves. Now we're going to install all the grounds to the ground bus bar and all the neutrals to the neutral bar over here. After you get the neutral and grounds located to their bus bars, Go ahead and put the breakers back on. Note the markings you did before so you can put everything back the way it came. And finally, after organizing all the wires, pushing the breakers back in, you can go ahead and install the breaker clamp again. The last step here is just to install the faceplate. Keep in mind you have the two screws that go on the bottom here. We can now go ahead and place our lithium battery in the holder. Now to clean up our wires, we are using a positive and negative bus bar to make everything run clean. That's up to you if you want to do that yourself. Um, we just want to have as minimal wires coming off the battery as possible. Now that you have the battery fully connected, go ahead and plug in your shore power lead. Come back into the trailer and now you go ahead and flip all the breakers on. Want to take note, make sure no lights have come on causing any faults. Everything appears good. You can hear the converter fan turn on. And that's it. The installation is complete. 
We chose this setup for the sole purpose of increasing our usual amp hours slightly without having to relocate any of the electronics. With a lithium battery, you are now able to use more of the amp hour capacity than with the standard lead acid deep cycle. Anytime you drain a standard deep cycle lower than 50%, you risk possible damage to the battery. This setup should take away that worry and also require no maintenance like the previous battery. Please like and subscribe for more videos. This is Michael with JM RV Rentals. Thank you for watching.